Neil from Essex here to show you a unique implement. We have a, a pretty good toolbox of implements to help with the task of mowing off the side of something, right? Some kind of offset mower, be it a, a three-point flail or a boom mower or a sickle bar or a, a trailblazer type, type loader mount mower. A offset type mower to reach over a pond bank or into a tree line is a really common application for a lot of people. It's a really common point of maintenance. And while we've had a pretty long list of things that we can fit up to tractors, the list of things that you could put on a skid steer, if that's the piece of equipment that you happen to have, are pretty limited, right? There's not a whole lot of ways to really get that, that offset reach. Bombalite here has a really unique piece that we have sold here locally. This is the first one that's been through our dealership. So while it's here, we're gonna take a minute, walk you around this and show you a little bit of this skid steer mounted offset flail. A six, a helping hand with your land. Implements like this are sometimes pretty challenging in order to work up on a skid steer, simply because the machine doesn't have a whole lot of functions coming off of it in order to operate all the different cylinders and the motors and everything that might be needed in a complex implement. If you look at what comes off the machine here, you have two different hydraulic lines. This has high flow on it in order to get that drum spinning good and fast. So you have the fat coupler and its return line down here on the bottom. You also have a case drain line down here on the bottom that's commonly found when you get into these high performance, high capacity hydraulic motors, particularly those that might be spun up the speed and then stopped abruptly. That case drain line allows that motor to overflow the oil back to sump where there's basically no pressure in order for it to flow back to. And also this yellow line right here, this is a 14 pin electrical connector that goes back down in here into this base unit where all the magic happens. Now, in order to make this thing work, to fold this out, because obviously we're not gonna mow like this, you have two different hydraulic cylinders doing the work. There's an internal one back here inside the gray housing that's gonna pivot this black piece around. And then this cylinder right here that's gonna take care of pivoting the mower itself. Now, once this is down, this is gonna be the one that's used in order to make, basically help you set your contour of your roadside or your pond bank that you might be cutting around. The one down in here is mostly used simply to get this thing back down onto the ground again. Now, one thing that's a little unique in order to go through and make all of this work is that you have a single hydraulic feed coming off of your machine. So there's a lever back here that allows you to turn the cutting head on and off. As soon as you have oil flowing through these lines, that cutter head is going to turn on. So for safety's sake, you can reach back here, turn the cutter head off when you fold the boom out so that you're not spinning that drum when you're just operating these hydraulic cylinders. Now I'm sure this becomes a little natural over time, but for me to go and do this for the first time, it, it did take some playing around with the controls. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn my machine on, hit my operate button and engage my hydraulics, right? Gonna be a little bit different from one skid steer to the next. Once I've done that, I'm gonna start running oil out that front hydraulic line. Now I can see that I'm doing that because there's a pressure gauge up here on the top of the unit that's pointed back here towards the operator. Once I can see that I've got oil running through there, I operate my hydraulic function here. It's gonna take this arm and fold it down. Now in my Kubota here, that is uh, function number seven and my 14 pin connector. Now you see my tilt cylinder there is not moving. This is just the one that takes the, the arm over. And now once I'm over, now I have another cylinder to operate in order to set my tilt. So that brings the whole thing out to the side and sets it up. That is a nice amount of offset. Um, and you think of a skid steer here as kind of the counterbalance for that big arm. It's actually a pretty good fit for a machine like this. Your skid steers are generally, you know, seven to 11,000 pound machines, depending if you've got wheels or tracks or whatever. Um, that's a good counterweight for a mower like this. It's kind of a cool application. Now, once I have that going, I'm gonna open up my safety releases here and reach forward and turn on the cutting head. Turn my hydraulics back on. And now when I start to run this, I'll kick up some dust and you can see the knives spinning there. And generally you're gonna run that function just by turning the hydraulics on their constant flow setting and just letting that thing go. Now I do have a little bit of flow there left. 
that I can move this up and down. And you see here when it goes up, the drum slows a little bit. There's still enough back pressure there in that drum to be able to keep this thing to angle. That's one thing I was kind of watching here. If there wasn't enough back pressure, you wouldn't be able to make these adjustments and you'd have to stop the drum. So it seems like they have the hydraulics balanced pretty well that you're able to do that. Yeah, and I even got enough on this one too to be able to lift all that weight. So pretty slick. Now, as I rev this thing up, I'm gonna bring those knives up to speed. One thing I really like uh, in applications like this, when you have, say, skid steer rotary cutters or any of that kind of stuff where you're running these hydraulic pumps, is the implements that actually go and take the expense to put a pressure gauge on the implement here for the operator. It really gives you a good visual of the loading of the implement. So if you get into really high grass or something and this thing starts to slow down, you're gonna be able to see that reflected in your pressure gauge and kind of give you an idea of how the implement's performing when you can't necessarily have a great sight line out to it, or if you have the radio on, you may not be able to hear exactly what it's doing. So happy for that. I think that's a nice addition to any hydraulic powered skid steer implement. A Couple of observations I would make out here in terms of how this thing is gonna cut. Uh, you have a lot of adjustability here just by the nature of the fact that you're on a skid steer, right? Very easy to pick this thing up and down and using your bucket curl circuit in order to kind of rake the thing front or back. Uh, you have this wheel here on the front. This is kind of gonna be your, your scalping wheel, your guide wheel to pivot this thing down. If I go through here and, and look though, the one thing I'm not nuts about is the amount of distance between the knives and the ground. There's not a whole lot of adjustability here as far as height control. Um, so we know from the past of running other flail mowers like this, they tend to give their best quality cut when they're really close to the ground. You, know, you can get almost a lawn-like finish out of a flail like this, but they tend to not work great at six and eight inches up in the air. Looking at the way that this thing is assembled and also kind of saying, you know, it's on a skid steer and you're hanging it off the side, this is not probably that kind of flail mower, right? Not something that you want to go out and groom a pasture with, but more for maintaining the side of roadsides where you're going to have stickier material and that kind of thing, a lot of heavier brush that you're really just trying to knock down. So I'd suspect it's going to do a fine job of the kinds of things it's intended for, but you are probably going to be a little limited in just how close you can get this thing to the ground. Another thing that's impressed me about Bombalite and the, the last several implements of theirs that I've sold has been the inclusion of extra teeth and stuff in the implement itself. The brush mulcher that we had here a couple of weeks ago included some nice carbide teeth along with it. This one here has got some extra hammer knives underneath of this cover. The thing that's cool about including this stuff is that in implements like this, inevitably at some point, you're going to need these parts, right? You're gonna hit a rock, you're gonna hit a manhole cover, uh, I don't know maybe who possibly did that before. Um, and you're gonna end up needing those kinds of parts down the road. It, in an industry of you know really competitive pricing pressure, right? There's a lot of companies out there that make implements for our equipment, a lot of different ones that we deal with. Putting this kind of stuff in is an extra expense in this implement that Bombalite wouldn't necessarily have to put there. So I appreciate their care for you, the customer, for those of us that you know, know we're gonna bang this stuff up, we're gonna need these things eventually. It's cool that they include them. It's an added cost in this implement and an added benefit to you. Experience is the great teacher on this stuff here, right? Uh, just a little bit that I'm learning here. When you bring this thing up, if you keep the mower upright when you come up the center and then bring this around, it comes down a lot more gently. Um, I was finding earlier that, that by taking the mower, if I bring that over first and then run this function here, boom, I get a lot more slam down, right? Because the weight of the mower is hanging that far over. So it just seems to come down a lot more gently if you bring the boom up first and then use the tilt function in order to take the mower over into its storage or, or transport position, right? Uh, this is a transport, transport position. You're not gonna store this mower like this, right? When it comes off the skid steer coupler, it's gonna fall over if you were to release it like this. Uh, so you do gotta remember, this thing is gonna take up some significant space in storage. You can't collapse it like this to park it. This is really for transporting up and down the road so that you don't have this big mower hanging off the side of the machine.